Welcome back to this scuba diving special edition of Mikasuki Sports Wrap. So far, I've completed the classroom portion of my Naui Scuba Diver certification, and it's time to hit the pool. But before I can do that, I'm going to need some equipment, so let's go back to Austin's Dive Center. Dennis, I've enrolled in the class for scuba diving, but I need to know what equipment is essential to diving. Uh, the first thing I think you need to start with is picking out your mass snorkeling fins. And as far as masks go, you notice we have a pretty wide array and selection of masks. There's different type of masks. The way first I categorize masks is low volume masks, such as a mask like this, until a larger volume mass is such as this. This is a larger volume mass. Larger volume mass usually a larger airspace between your, your face and the mass. Also, usually they provide be better visibility with more lens. You have the side lenses here and the big one panel on the front. So you're going to get better visibility out of a mass like that. Downside to a mass like that is clearing the water out of it. It's a little more difficult since it's a larger volume of mass, more water gets into it. The lower volume mass, of course, there's less airspace, so less water volume will get into it, so they're easier to clear. The black silicone, what that'll do is it knocks the light out. So if you spend a lot of time on the surface, such as snorkeling, uh, free diving, and you're on the surface trying to look down on a sunny day, the black is going to knock the light from coming out, coming in, into the mass, whereas the clear allows the sun to come into the mass. So when you're looking down into the water, sometimes it hampers your visibility because you get a lot of glare. Choosing a mass is just fitting the mass and finding a mass that fits your face correctly and also that there are certain things you're going to need to do in the water, such as equalizing. When you have to seal off the, seal off the air pressure to your nose to equalize the pressure in your ear. So you need, need to be able to fit the mask, be able to get to your nose and be able to pinch it off. Okay, so uh, should I try one on? Yeah, sure. The, Let's easy. find one that fits me. Color is important to me and so is style. So I think this one is a little more my type here. <laughs> <laughs> As far as snorkels go, I'm going to categorize them as you have like your conventional J style snorkels, which of course look like a J. And those are for more people that are free diving or you know, snorkeling. Uh, when you're doing a scuba class, I think it's important that you buy a snorkel that's flexible and hangs out of the way. The reason being is most of the time while you're diving, the regulator is going to be in your mouth. So you want this hanging out of the way. Lots of choices when it comes to fins, as you can see here. How do you know which choice is right for you? Well, for a scuba class, you need a fin that's going to be able to push you through the water with the scuba gear on. Most people that register for a scuba class pick out a fin, and most of them take a strap fin. With the strap fins, what you also need to buy is a booty, because all these foot pockets are oversized to accommodate a booty. And what that does is it's going to give you some protection on your feet. However, in South Florida, where most of the uh, diving is done off a boat, you can use closed steel fins, which we sell to quite a few. And what you want to do is when you buy a closed steel fin, you want to make sure it's one that's sufficient for diving, such as this one here. With Dennis's help, I picked out my mask, fins, and snorkel. Then it was time for the pool portion of my certification class. Here with George for our very first pool session in this scuba diving certification process. George, what are we doing in the pool here today? We're, we're going to get wet, Allison. Actually, the first thing we're going to do is uh, the swim test, the world famous swim test. That's one for Allison. Step one, 50 feet underwater, preferably uh, not breathing water. Step two, 300 yard swim. Step three, 15 minute tread water. But Allison is amazingly buoyant. Then we're going to come up here at poolside and do gear assembly, where we'll be putting the BCs on the tanks, regulators on the tank and BC. Pump up the jack. Pump all the way up. It'll start releasing air at that point. Stop pumping. Then we're going to get up to the deep end. We're going to do some exits and entrances into the pool. We'll do the giant stride entrance the backward roll entrance and the control seated entrance. After we've done that, we're going to get our gear on here in the pool uh, and we're going to do seven skills. Regulator recovery, mass clearing, I know you've been thinking about that one. My first attempt at clearing my mask didn't go so well. Hold on, I feel it. You are? Oh. It's, it's, I don't, it's this, uh, this. <laughs>
But if at first you don't succeed, A series of skills like that will, that will enable us to react to things that may or may not happen to us underwater. We're then going to do something very exciting. You and Michael are going to have a little competition. You're going to go from this end up to that end, and you're going to ditch your gear. Then you're going to swim back down here exhaling. Then the second half of that is you're going to take a deep breath here and go and don your gear. Then last, or almost last, we'll do four breathing exercises where we're going to do uh, free flow breathing, we're going to do buddy breathing, we're going to do shared air breathing, then we're going to do a controlled emergency swimming ascent. Once we've completed all of this underwater stuff, then we're going to get on the surface, do tire diver tow, and rescue breathing on the surface. But basically that's sort of the capsule of it, and uh, that process should take us something between an hour and a half and two hours. We've got a lot to do today. Yes, don't, don't, don't get wrinkled. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. When we come back, it's time to take our training to a much bigger and more beautiful pool of water. We'll head to Key Largo for our first ocean dive.